Yo, finally, I'm born again. <laughs> I said it right. Finally, I'm born again. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 12. I want to teach you something. Hold on unto this word. I'm not encouraging you to forget any other thing that I've taught you. But this one, cherish it. Amen? Amen. Cherish this word. What does it say? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. A threefold cord is not easily broken. What is a threefold cord? Of a child of God, of a Christian. There are three principles that holds the child, the life of a child of God together. Number one, the love of God. Number two, obedience. Three, the fear of God. Love of God. Obedience and the fear of God. These three will make you withstand anything that come against you. You shall always prevail a winner. These are the three fold cords. The love of God Obedience, the fear of God. If as a child of God, your life is centered upon these three, I'm not saying maybe you'll be victorious. You will live a life of victory. You will live a life of increase. You will live a life of success. Check here. I'm not saying challenges won't come. However, you will be able to withstand those challenges. Do you hear me, church? But before I can tell you about them, there is one thing that God specifically told me that I must tell you. That he loves you. He commanded me to tell you. Jeremiah 31. Verse 3. To 4. Jeremiah 31. Verse 3 to 4. Can you give me. Uh, more power. Thank you. These monitors are as good as replaced. Jeremiah 31. Verse 3 to 4. What does he say? The Lord has appeared of all to me. Saying, reduce the pitch. You know, to, to have a pastor who has a DJ is a problem. <laughs> the Lord, yes. The Lord has appeared of, of all to me. Saying, yes, I've loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Wow. Imagine waking up to these words every day. I have loved you with an everlasting love. And with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Meaning, you, you are closer to God because of his loving kindness. Hallelujah. Some of you believe that you were born again because you were running away from issues. No. You are close. He is the one who drew, he drew you to him. Why? Because he has loved you with an everlasting love. The moment you say, 
I, I, I receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior is the day that God started loving you as Jesus. The same love that he has for Jesus Christ is the same love that he has for you. No, no, you are not hearing me. The same love that he has for Jesus Christ is the same love that he has for you. Some of you are saying, but I have sinned. I have done this. Let us go to Romans 8.88. I want you to see something. Romans 8.88. Romans 8.88. Say, neighbor, you are loved. Stop, st stop behaving like a street reject. Say, you are loved. Look at, say, say neighbor. You are loved with an everlasting love. Not from your mother, not from your father, not from your sister, not from your brother, but from heaven and not from angels, but from God himself. Church, receive this love. Receive it. It, 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 it is one area where the church is struggling to live their lives, to receive the love of the Father. And you, you cannot love him the way you're supposed to love him until you receive the, his love the way he loves you. Am I talking to someone? So, church, he said, for I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. 39. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. What? Let us stop there. Nothing shall be able to separate you from the love of God. Nothing. Do you understand that the person who loves you is the one who said, let there be and it was. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He's loving you with the same creative love. Oh. I don't think, I, I don't think you get it. I don't, he, he's loving you with the same creative love. When you sin, his love creates grace. When, when, when you go out of the way, his love draws you back. It's the same creative love. The one that put Jesus on the cross is the same love that he's still loving you with today. That's why he said, nothing, nothing shall be able to separate you. When God says nothing, nothing means nothing. You are loved. I want you to, to capture this with your spirit man. Capture it. Never lose it. You are loved. Unconditional love. He loved you first. Before you can even know how to spell the word love, you were loved. Before you can even know that there are conditions of being loved, you were loved. Before you can even know how to put on makeup, loving yourself, you were what? Loved. This is where your breakthrough is, child of God. Your breakthrough is in your ability to receive what God has in store for you, love. 
Am I talking to someone? Listen. Listen. Let us go to Romans 8.88. Put them together, Randy. 8.88 and 39 together. Put them together. Say, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things, no things present, no things to come. <laughs> Check here. No things present, no things to come. He is the only one who loves you in advance. <laughs> you, you're not getting it. You, you are loved in advance. When you wake up tomorrow, you'll find that love waiting for you. Irrespective of what you might have been planning, believe you me, if you understand how much you love him, his love can cancel any evil thought or idea that you had. Why? Because you are waking up to a godly love. Am I talking to someone? I can't hear your amen. You know, this is the love where, that when condemnation comes, you say, I have been loved in advance. Amen. When self-rejection comes, I have been loved in advance. Amen. When failure comes, I have been loved in advance. When rejection comes, I have been loved in advance. He said, no death, no things present, no things to come. No height, no depth, no any other created thing shall be able to separate you. That's why I don't care who says what. When I wake up, you can tell me that I've, I've failed a thousand times. But when I look at Romans 8, 38 to 39, I'm loved. When I looked at Jeremiah 31, verse 3 to 4, I am loved with an everlasting love. Inexhaustible love. Did I do anything to deserve that love? What is it that I have given to God to buy that love? Nothing except to say, Jesus, come into my life. If you understand this love, when you pray from the position of this love, your faith should be able to move you from one glory to another. You should advance in prayers. You should advance in receiving answers to your prayers. You should be able to prepare for answers to your prayers. Why? Because you are loved. He said, you are the apple of my eye. The way he cares about you. He said, I have counted the number of your hair. That's how diligent his love is towards you. You are loved, child of God. However, we need to be able to return this love back. That's where our breakthrough is. Our love, our victories are manifested in love. Second, First Corinthians two, verse nine. The love of God cannot waver because of your unfaithfulness. In your unfaithfulness, He remains faithful. In your weakness, He remains strong. Check this. But it is written, 
eye has not seen, no ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for those who does what? Who love him. So there are things that only the love of God can manifest them. Uh oh. He didn't say there are things that are prepared. He said, I has not seen. He's saying, even the prophetic cannot receive them. No ear has heard. Even those who flow in revelation cannot, cannot receive them. It is not for prayer warriors. It is not for those who fast a lot. They are the special key for this special breakthrough. Is for those who love him. Oh. Are, are, are you with me, church? Do, do, do you get it? So, he, he loves you so much. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. The key, the key, listen to me. Church, listen to me carefully. There are certain things that your prayer cannot get them. Your religious activities cannot get them. Only the love of the Father can unlock them. How do we know we love the Father? How do we know that we love the Father? How do you know that you love your child? How do you know that you love your husband? How do you know that you love your wife? Every love has action. There is no form of love that is actionless. The love of the father, it is, prayer is very important. Don't get me wrong. Prayer is important. Worship is important. Giving is important. But there is one thing Thing that surpasses all is the condition of your heart towards God. How much do you love him? Is it a lip service? Is it an action service? When you are saving, are you saving him or yourself? There is a thin line. I can come here and prepare a sermon for the sake of my ego so that when I sit down, people can say, wow, what a word. I can come here and sing. When I sit down, people will say, wow, Mr. Shilwane can sing. I can come and clean People will say, we can see that is Homoto we have cleaned here. Things are different. But the condition of your heart is the one. Hebrews 4.12 says, he's the discerner of the intents and the attitude of the heart. If we can have the ability to love him as we ought to, believe you me, when we draw closer to him, the love that he has for us combined with our love for him will release what is written there, 
eye has not seen, no ear has heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who sing a lot. No. For those who give a lot. For those who fast a lot. But for those who love him. Everything else that I have just said. When singing is a byproduct of God's love. It becomes different. It becomes worship. Uh, you are not getting me now. When singing is a byproduct of God's love, it becomes what? Worship. When giving is a byproduct of your love to God, it becomes sacrificial giving. When dancing is a byproduct of God's love, it becomes praise. It becomes the highest form of praise. That's why after all that David has done, his sin, killing a man for his wife, committing all these other sins, the day David gave his heart to God, he never looked back. And God said, I found David, my servant, a man after my heart. Can God say the same thing to you? Can he say, I find Murendeni, a boy after my heart. Do you love him in such a way that his love, your love for him can draw words out of his mouth? Matthew 6, 24. Only you are oh, only only you are oh, only you only you are wonderful. For there's no one. Listen to me. When a man says these words to his wife, says, you are wonderful. There's no one like you. The woman does not listen to the words. She looks for the sincerity of the heart in his eyes. Does he mean it? Is it from the heart? Are we together? Can you go to Matthew, Mark 12, 30? We'll come back to this one. Mark, Mark 12, 30. Mark 12, verse 30. That's why Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ saw this. You know, if we can be a church that is known to love God, the pastor will have a problem with the church keys. Because everybody will be saying, I want the church keys. I want to be in the presence of the Lord. There are demands already for the church keys. I know them. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. What does a heart represent? Whenever you see the Bible says the heart is speaking about the Koyoko spirit man your inner man 
before your mouth before your before your mouth can release your heart should confirm Are you aware that the church, we are the only people in the religious circles who say what we don't mean because people will clap hands when we say the right things? Hallelujah. Are you aware that a pastor can stand up and preach a sermon that he doesn't believe in nor live. And people say, that man is the man of God. Did you hear what he has said? We serve the God of our heart. We serve the God of hearts. He said, what does it mean by your heart? We need to download this. When you wake up in the morning, who comes first to your mind? I know my daughter. Conflicts come first. <laughs> Daddy, I'm hungry. <laughs> I know what she means by that. It's the conflicts. When you wake up in the morning, who comes first to your heart? I, I want to teach you the love of God. Who comes first to your heart? Is it your washing? Is it your dishes? Is it your chores? Who is the love of your life? Don't answer me. Let it be your conversation with the Holy Spirit. So, and with all your soul. Your soul is the home of all that is you. Your laughter. Your anger. Your joy. Your peace. What is the source of your peace? I was talking to someone saying if they don't have money, they get sick. Like literally get sick. Like I can't function. If my balance is not good, I just can't function. I'm I become disabled, you know. I said, that's very wrong. When God is the source of your peace, he has become your first love. Amen. I have seen something in my life. I've been, I've been young, now I'm old. I can, I can say I'm old because in a few days' time I'll be 50. I've, yeah, I'm old. Yeah, I'm closer to Sasa now. <laughs> and Miss Matomi is here. What, what did I say when she's here? I chose the wrong Sunday. <laughs> I want to tell you something. I know in my life, in my circle, I've got multimillionaires, people who are very wealthy. I've got everyone that is every, in every sphere of life. But there is one thing that I've seen. Money doesn't bring you joy. Yes, money answers all things. 
but it's not the source of joy. I've seen the APS people driving tears, carrying a tomato, tomato with a tin of fish and onion, very happy that they are going to have a meal before they sleep. And they sleep without taking sleeping tablets because they've got peace. Am I trying to say poverty is good? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying when God is the source of your peace, money becomes the tool. You are not hearing me. How much do you love God? God is looking for a man Bongo Wayne, who loves him truthfully. He is looking for a woman that he can say, because you love me so much, you won't be a damn. I want to make you a kingdom financial. Can I transfer millions through you? <laughs> you are not hearing me. Can I trust the offense with you? Can I trust the old age with you? Can I transfer? Can I channel the finances of the offense, the old age, the, the kingdom of God through you? Because what? You love me with all your soul. Your soul is not tied up to mammon. If you want to see divine acceleration, cut off everything that has been holding you back. Everything that your soul is attached to, cut them off and attach them to God. You know, when I was talking to God about this, he, he showed me a picture. I won't forget it. He, he showed me a soul attached to everything on earth. And he began to cut everything. Some of the things that he was cutting off, you know, when, when, he's about, when he goes to the core, or in the middle where he's supposed to cut, it was a bit difficult, but he was able to cut it off. And he said, he took all those things that were attached to everything on earth, on earth and attached them to him, God. And guess what happened to the soul? The soul became an overflow because everything about that soul was attached to God, not to earth. He said, you see, when you love me, when you attach everything that concerns you to me, I give life to everything that concerns you. Are we together, church? So we need to cut anything that has replaced God in your life. Cut cut, attach to God, catch, attach to God, and, and see God giving life to, every, to that very area that you thought you can run by yourself. Am, am I talking to someone? Say, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind. And all your strength. I saw something during the conference. Women, can you just appreciate yourselves? Men, I'm not, I'm not ignoring. Women, appreciate yourselves. Do it better. Okay, by the way, you don't know how to appreciate yourselves. I'll take you to the school soon. I'm still checking for a better school of self-appreciation. Ladies, please appreciate yourselves. Amen. I saw you giving all your strength to God. These people slept late and wake up early to cook. 
after cooking, doing everything, clean the church. I'm seeing the very same people who are cooking, are cleaning the church, are picking up the things, others in the kitchen, the same zeal, the same energy from Friday to Sunday. And, 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 and one of the visitors have said to me, say, how did you get people to be committed like this? I said, believe you me, I don't know. I don't know. They love God. You see, when, when, if you love God in such a way that your strength can be seen saving God, God will give you more things that don't require strength. He becomes your strength. Yeah, am I talking to someone? He becomes what? Your strength. I thought maybe I'll teach all the three. No, I still have. Oh, I still have time. Oh, time today is very slow. I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm very much happy. Whoever has been given the tender of time today is doing a good job. <laughs> Unlike these ones, my Lord shedding. <laughs> These ones are. Can you, can you go to 29, the same scripture? And they will come back to it. Oh, combine them, Randy. Combine them. 29 and 30. Ah, I worship you. Jesus answered him saying, the first of all the commandments is, hear O Israel. The first of all the commandment is, hear ye O Sichuan, O city of all nations. The Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord with all your heart. That's the first commandment. Let me tell you why the strength. Acts 1 8. Acts 1 8. I want to show you something. Acts 1 8. I'm believing God that we shall touch the two before we pray. Acts 1 8. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you don't love God. Yeah. yeah because you are politicians. I don't know when I EFF, when I Action South Africa, when I COPE, when I IFP, when I ANC, ANC, everything. You, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. This one scripture has been misunderstood for, for years. Many focus on the power. You only receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Amen? So, the, the end goal here is not power. It's the Holy Spirit upon you. Why? Why that? The Holy Spirit gives you the ability to love God the way he does. Are we together? That's why the disciples, when they received the Holy Spirit, they were unstoppable in their love for God. And that became their power. Are we together? So also, he gives you the personality to love God and relate with him the way they do in 1 John 5, 8. There are three in heaven. God the Father, the Word, before he becomes the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And these three agree as, what, as one. When Jesus Christ cried, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabbatan. He was crying, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, why have you left me? Because in his lifetime, he has never been without the Holy Spirit. So he was feeling the void 
that the love was gone. Oh. He said, I'm, I'm no longer connected with the father. That love that I had with the father, I'm not feeling it anymore. My God, my God, why have you left me? I have never been loveless in my life. How can I love you without being connected with you, with the Holy Spirit? That, what, that, is, that is the word he was crying for. And that way his power was. So when you love the God with all your heart, with all your strength, when the Holy Spirit come upon you, that love of God becomes your power. Do you want to experience power in your ministry? Do you want to experience power in your prayer life? Do you want to experience power in everything that you do in your family? Do you want to declare things and see things happening in your family? Love God. When you love him, you'll be like your pastor. My dogs don't know a vet. When they get sick, I talk to God about them. And they get healed. The other one, was the leg was broken. When I came back, I said, it was working with three legs. I said, Randy, bring her here. Lay hands on her. We drove her. I said, when you come back, it will be working. When you came back, the dog was running. Why? How do I know? God told me he even loved the cockroaches. Yeah, I, I mentioned cockroaches because you hate them. <laughs> he loves, he, he is his creation. When you love God, he, he, he shares with you everything. How many of you want to know what God is about to do? Love him. In that fellowship, he will, he will tell you tomorrow. He said to Abraham, he said to himself, how can I hide what I'm about to do to Sodom and Gomorrah? How can I hide it from Abraham, my friend? Do you know why Abraham was called the friend? He, because he could not withhold Isaac to God. He said, I cannot hide it. I must tell him, this man loves me. Because he loves me, he, he, he deserves to know everything that I'm about to do on earth. There are things that God is about to do in your family. And he would like to have a conversation with you. Yeah, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. There are things that God is about to do in your family. He would like to have a conversation with you. He would love to tell you what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. The question is, do you love him enough for him to trust you with the secrets? Deuteronomy 6 verse 5. Say neighbor a threefold cord. Deuteronomy 6 verse 35. 6 35. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 35. Say neighbor. I see the love of God in you. But you can do better. <laughs> I, I, I know that you can do better, but you, you don't like it. <laughs> Deuteronomy 6.35. What's taking you so long, guys? Eh? Oh, 6.5. Deuteronomy 6 verse 5. Why did I say 35? Yeah, don't worry, I'm writing my own Bible. And you must buy it. I'm joking, I'll never do that. You shall love the Lord. <laughs> what does it say? Read it again. Say, I shall. Let's continue. Uh, 
Amen. So your strength also includes your giving. Your sweat. God, I love you, but when you come here, no, you know, I've been working, you see. I'm the one who, let God withdraw that spirit and say today you're not waking up and see you will go to work. You don't like what I've said, ne? It's not, it's not good news, ne? Don't worry. I'm not dealing with good news. I'm dealing with the truth. Who, who's giving you the spirit to breathe? Say God. Say I shall love my Lord with all my strength, including my money. Say it. Say including my money. Because that's where the stronghold is of the church. Mm. If, we, if, if we don't teach you this, you'll remain poor. This is the truth that must be known. Your strength includes your money. When God sees that you are loving him with all your strength, what does he do? He adds more what? Strength. Yeah, pastor, you were coming okay until you touch. No, no, don't, don't, don't. If, if you want to hear less amens in the church, start with M-O. <laughs> start with M-O. If you can start with B-L-E. Ah. If you can start with B-L-E. Ah, you see. M-O. N-E-Y. And that's where the enemy is holding people back. The way is holding us back. He will send us everywhere else except to God. Amen. Amen. Matthew 22 verse 37. No, I'm talking too much. I must continue. My name is Pumulani, but I'm just the exact opposite of my name. My neighbor is laughing. My neighbor from Venda is laughing too much. Uh -uh. No, no, no. I want us to read 35. Matthew verse 20, chapter 22 verse 35. I, I, I want you to look at it in a different angle. What does it say? But one of them, ne? who is them? Say the Pharisees. Yes. What, 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 what? Uh, guys, can you go to where we are reading? It's, we're on 35. One of them, who, who was he? A lawyer. Ask, him, ask Jesus Christ a question. Testing him and saying, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And why did Jesus Christ respond? What, what was the response of Jesus Christ? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. So a church that, that does not understand the great commandment in the law does not understand the breakthroughs. Do you want to walk in breakthrough? Love the Lord your God. I'm going to say, Pastor, you've been saying us love the whole morning. Yes, I can even say it to, even tonight. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Amen. Number two, obey your God. One of the greatest signs of love is obedience. We have it more in African men. African men don't know how to obey their wives. And obeying a wife is a sign of love. I know that this one is so controversial. Uh, in, uh, there will be a men conference. <laughs> and I'll, I'll be called to, to account. <laughs> I'm ready. 
Love obeys. Amen. I'm not saying obey your slave. I'm not saying obey your slave. Because I'm going to have to say, I'm going 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 to say, no, I didn't say that. That's what I did. I'm not talking about that. My dear, can we go left? It will be faster. Okay. The one who's saying, can you go left? It will be faster. She's saying it because she loves me. And she wants us to get there faster. So it is love that is talking, not direction. It, ne it needs wisdom to understand it. Job 36 verse 11. Obedience. How do you obey God? If you love him, you won't want to hurt him. Am I talking to someone? If you love him, you will know that, you know, I'm a father. I know how it feels when your children disobey you. It hurts. Because you know that you are doing it for them. When I say don't do this, one of the things that I'm grateful for for my father is that he never gave me the opportunity to go to Beshes. Knowing me, I would have come back alive because I used to love fights a lot. So I would have started fights then, been stabbed and come back there. I'm telling you, there was, there was no place that I went drinking that I didn't come back fighting. I, I would beat someone. There should be something. So I love him for that, that he protected my life. I will be dead. It, was it nice then when he say, don't go to Beshis, don't go to festival? It was not nice. Because I would look at my age group, they are coming back, telling me the next morning, yo, yo, yo. Yo, um, do. Ah, I was keep and dot. <laughs> they would be telling me, yo, yo. I'm telling you, I'll tell, talk about our artist. I won't talk about your, your what, what do you call your artist now? Eh? Eh? Bo Cuesta. Ah, imagine, that is not a name, Cuesta. Ukari, Ukari, it's a name of, a, of Inkomazi, you know. <laughs> that's, that, that's not a name. <laughs> I'll be in trouble with the youth. Let me keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so obeying my father it was difficult but there is one thing that I didn't want to lose his love for me he loved me so much my father loved me so much so that he will buy me more expensive suits than himself When Jonathan D was in fashion, me and you will understand this. I was, wearing, I was dressing a Jonathan D. I was the best dressed boy in town. He was, he will always wear the same trouser. He will take you to the tailor back and forth. On the other side was shiny. He loved me so much. And I, was, I said, when I work, I'm going to dress up that man. And I'm doing it. I, I, so he, his love protected me. So obedience protects you. Am I telling you to someone? When you obey God, it protects you. Are the biggest beneficiaries of obedience more than God? Everything that God says, don't do. They are for your own good. You benefit more than God by far. And what does God benefit? He benefits, he still has a body to use here on earth. Because when you are a spirit without your body, you can, you can be seated with God, but you are no longer useful to God. You, you, say neighbor, you are here for a purpose. Say you have a mandate from heaven. When you obey God, you are able to fulfill your mandate here on earth. Am I telling you to someone? You are able to fulfill your mandate. Job 36, verse 11, what does it say? Job 
You see the youth, you've wasted my seven minutes with your soul. What do you call it? Oh, him or her. Quest, what? Yeah, whatever. You know. Job 36 verse 11. What does it say? What does it say? If they obey in what? And what are the benefits? They shall spend their days in what? And, and their years in what? And their years in pleasure. Guys, Job 36 verse 11 is in the Bible. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend all their days in what? In prosperity. So, when we say prosperity, First John 3.2. Let's go to First John 3.2. I want to show you another form of prosperity. No, leave it there. First John 3.2. First John 3.2. 1 John 3, 2, what does it say? Third, third John, third John. Third John 1, 2, sorry. Third John. Third John, I don't know. Third John. Third John 3. Beloved. Hi, man. What, what am I doing? I'm confusing myself. I'm confusing myself. And there is, there's no even confusion here. Hmm? The third John, eh? The third John. Oh, third John, yeah. Chapter 1, verse 2. The only chapter. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So there is a prosperity for the soul. When your soul is not prospering, you are miserable. You are truly distressed. When, you, when, you, when the word it's, it's in you, and you are obeying the word, your soul prospers. Peace is the sign of the soul prospering. Contentment is the sign of the soul prospering. And, 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 and. Amen? So when we say, if they obey and save him, they shall spend all their days in prosperity. It's, it's Prosperity in totality. You are at peace. You let nothing. You have everything. Don't be a millionaire if you the sleeping pills. The biggest consumers of sleeping pills in the world are found where? In America. Which the country is, the, now, is now second in China. China is now the most number of millionaires. No? You know that you know that it overtook America. It's second in China, but they in America they consume more sleeping pills. That is prosperity. Without the soul prospering. When you are prospering, you are able to sleep with your million dollars. You just fall asleep drinking coffee. That's how peaceful you are. Yeah, drinking coffee. Yeah, you fall asleep drink, drinking coffee. What happened? You know, just having a cup of coffee. The, the next thing is four, is four o'clock. Uh, what happened? No, I just fell asleep, man. What happened? I don't know. I don't know. Where we, I was supposed to go to London, and then I missed the flight because I fell asleep drinking coffee. That, so that's how peaceful you are. Amen. Why? Obedience. Obey your God. First Samuel fifteen twenty two. Let's make it fast. First Samuel fifteen twenty two. Well, we are living now. No. First Samuel fifteen verse twenty two. First Samuel is in the Bible, ne? To those who only know 
no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And about what? Those who love that scripture, you will get limp about that didn't do. And after that, they will say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. <laughs> so the, Samuel said, has the Lord, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than what? Sacrifice. Obedience is better than what? You can give a million dollars with a rebellious heart to God that strange fire. Let us all stand up. I'll talk to you while you're standing. Twenty-three. What, what, what does twenty-three says? For rebellion, it says what? It says the sin of what? Witchcraft. How rebellious were loyal? I see Nike by the. And stubbornness as an iniquity and adultery. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also rejected you from being the king. Every time when you disobey, you reject the word of the Lord, you suffer what? Rejection also. But, this, but the way God rejects us is funny. I love you, but you come here, but you just won't get this, but you are closer to me. I won't give you the prosperity that you want because you might choose to go play golf on Sunday than to be with me. But because I love you so much, I will deny you that which you believe you deserve until you show me that you will obey me. As you grow in obedience, then I can even grow you in other areas of your life because you are trustworthy. You can be trusted with much. So God does not reject you and put you far. No, that's not the thing that I'm talking about. He put you here and say, like, like a father and mother relationship, you'll be in the house, but that gene, you won't get it. Mm. You'll eat my Nando's, but that gene, you'll live like I own. You'll eat my McDonald's, but that phone, forget about it. That's how God does it. Amen? When we disobey. So, Imagine most of us, where will we be now if we're working in full obedience? Say, neighbor, as for me, I know I'll be far. The last one, I'll, I will continue it next week. Proverbs 1 7. Proverbs 1 7. What does it say? The fear of the Lord is what? Is the beginning of what? All wisdom. The most dangerous person around you, youth, where, where's the youth? Lift up your hands, youth. Okay. The most dangerous around you, guys, is the one who does not fear the Lord. Did you hear what I've said? A person around you, youth, who does not fear God, is the more generous person. That person is more generous than about cash in transit. Because I'm telling you, do you know why they're more generous? Because that person is destroying your destiny. The cash in transit, they're only taking money. The destiny is still intact. Do you get what I mean? They can take money from the bank, but the destiny of the bank is still intact. Anybody around you who does not fear God is the most dangerous person in your life because your, when your destiny is altered, let, 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 let me give you an example. You know, when a ship or an airplane is leaving the port or an airport, if it can miss a direction by one degree, that one degree in the airport still looks very little. Because like from here to here. But as it continues the journey, 
By the time it reaches the destiny, it's a thousand kilometers away from the destination, just by one degree. So that's how destinies are altered. A person who does not fear God will just say, just taste. Just do this, you won't be caught. Or, or it's a friend, I've got a girlfriend also, when I live in Leon, or it's a friend, whatever that they advise you to do, it might be like this, but as soon as it start traveling kilometers, it becomes a thousand of kilometers. One degree can give birth to a thousand of kilometers. Are you aware of that? Ask those. I've never been a pilot. I've never been a captain of the ship. I've read it. I saw it. And I believe it. If, 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 if you don't believe me, put a ruler down and a compass and just say one degree and start drawing a line and, and see where the line will go. That's how destinies are altered because of lack of the fear of the Lord. That little compromise, which might look insignificant, as you live your life, as you grow old, you will realize that even your children are living the same life. You have altered the destinies of generation by one little compromise. Fear God. He will protect you and your seed. Ecclesiastes 4.17 A threefold cord is not easily broken. Number one, what, what is number one? Love the Lord. Number two, obey God. Number three, fear God. A threefold cord is not easily what? Broken. When you master these three with everything you have, believe you me, nobody will force you to pray because you love your God. Nobody will force you to study the word of the Lord because you want to understand the mind of the one you love. That's the reason why I'm going to use people who I love. The moment you say, okay, I'm going to meet each other, yes, okay, when courtship, okay, it's fine. What do you want to do? We want to spend more time together. Do you want understanding the mind of each other? By the time we grow older in relationship, we are able to finish off each other's sentences. Imagine God is talking to you. Say, Chris, this is what I love you to do. Oh, I know God, you want me to go to Mukopan and preach the gospel. Yes, exactly. That's what I want you to do. When he said to Adam, name all the animals. He knew that Adam understand his mind. It was not Adam's mind that worked. It was his understanding of the mind of God that worked. So when you love your God, you understand his mind. When you obey him, you are his sweetheart. I have found a girl after my heart. I have found precious. I have found whosoever a woman after my heart. I have found whosoever a man after my heart. To God is he cherished that when somebody is after himself. Anything else that we worship and put in competition with God delays our divine acceleration. Hallelujah. Last fear the Lord. Wow. I didn't go deep on this one. But it's the beginning of all wisdom. You want to make it in life? Make it your priority. If God says no to this, there is something that Satan benefits from it. That's how I think. If say God says no, there is something that Satan benefits from it. I don't want Satan to benefit anything from my life. Lift up your hands. And talk to your father. Please distribute Holy Communion. Tell him that father I love you. I love you. I love you very much. I choose to obey you. 
I choose to fear you. I choose not to compromise anything. I choose you, Father. I choose you, God. I choose you, God. I choose you, God. I choose to love you. I choose to be with you. I choose to love you. I choose to be with you. I choose to fear you. I choose to obey your word. For I know that in your obedience, there is strength. In your obedience, there is breakthrough. In your obedience, there is increase. In your obedience, there is protection. I choose you, Lord. I choose you, Lord. I choose you, Lord. Hallelujah. Say, Father, I choose you. I choose to love you. I choose to obey you. I choose to fear you. You know, there is something I was driving to work. I was having a conversation with God. We were talking about fear. We were teaching me about fear. He said, he, he told me something so profound, Mr. Stolen. He said to me, fear me in such a way that there is no more fear left to be afraid of anything else. I said, how do I do? He said, fear me with everything in you. When you fear me, God, the fear of everything else will be gone. I know you don't understand. I'll teach you. Maybe if God allows me, next week I'll teach you about this. That when you give God all your fears, you, you are left with no reserves to fear anything else. Meaning, your faith and your trust and everything in you is fully vested in God. When you are supposed to be afraid, you say, but God, I'm leaning on, I'm leaning on you. I, I, I'm, I, I, I wish I can be afraid, but there is nothing left in me to, be, to, to use as fear. All my fear is in you, God. So the moment all your fear is in God, what do you do? You lean on him. Are we together? You lean on God. If you find yourself being afraid of the future, being afraid of tomorrow, being afraid of whatever that you're afraid of, just know that there is some fear that is still in you that's supposed to be in God. You are not rever giving God all the reverence. My friend is saying, Pastor, you are talking to me. Give God all the reverence such that there is no more fear left in you. When you exhaust all your fear to God, all that you will have for other situation, you will just be careful. I can't do this. Are you afraid of this now? Because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know, yes, I know he holds my future. And life is worth believing just because he lives. Imagine seeing that. Because I can face 